Hey guys, my name is Jacob Cohen, and I'll be talking to you today about Vue.js, which is a direct competitor to React, and it is completely open source. So what, there are some differences in why you would want to choose uh, Vue other than React, and those would be that it is more simple in its setup. You can just see more easily exactly how each, uh, each part of the app is set up. Uh, it is faster in every way, so I've read online and their own uh, their own dynamics page. And uh, if you have an application where you have a lot of little HTML snippets, it is just uh, by far and above the best. It just, it's easier to, re uh, to interact with if you have that sort of setup. Now, React is better in other circumstances, such as it is older and has a much, much larger ecosystem. So it is more tested and scalable, and there's a ton more third-party apps. And now I will show you the basics. Okay, I'm just going to actually use it full screen there. Okay, so the first application I will show you is a basic one at its very core. So we can see in our HTML, we have the script to actually bring in view, and we have a uh, ID app for a div. Inside of it is what we're used to with double brackets and a message. Um, I won't go into this yet. So to make a new view application, you just create new view, and it is, takes in an object with key value pairs. Uh, the first thing is L, which is the element itself. It points to an ID app, and it has data such as a uh, message in this instance where we can set. Um, you can also put in methods, as you see here, in a, another methods key, where we can name it something like reverse message, where it can actually point to itself and say split this message, reverse it, and then join it again. And we can see in our uh, HTML that we have something called vOn, which is specific to view. What this does is it just sets any time there is a click happening on this button, call the, call the, uh, the method reverse message, which we can see down here. And it uh, has a name reverse message. And what it does is you can see it actually changes the message, updates it. And what view does is it automatically does it for us. So a cool thing about view is that we do not need a set state ever. It is all mutable, as we've come to apparently hate in our classes. They tell us, no, mutable is the best. I care to disagree sometimes, because this is just so much easier looking. Just look at it. I mean, it's so, it's so pretty compared to that. What is that? I don't like this. What is this? A set state? I don't want it. It's React versus view. Here is more interesting stuff we can do. So computed properties. So let's say you want to have uh, one property that relies on another one. And it is, I guess, a multiple of it. So we could do something like we add a data value for counted, like up here. And uh, we have it automatically uh, make itself two times the other one. But there's another cooler thing we could do called computed, where every time you want to access it, access counter, we can just access it as a computed uh, a computed data type, which would return uh, this, uh, in this instance, clicks times two. So the, uh, uh, if we did it, we can just show you how it's always two times it. And uh, the computer property is using this.click, so it will update accordingly. That is another simple thing. So conditionals. Conditionals are very cool. You can have pretty much if statements, elf statements uh, within the HTML template itself. So we have just the data show is true. And we, uh, we can have if statements in the DOM itself, where if uh, show is true, which we see it is, uh, it'll be completely, it won't be completely gone from the DOM because the v if show is true. And v elf, v if else, basically, we have I am a sneaky line, where it's gone completely, I believe. I will show you where we have the div app. So it is not there, as you can see. But if we set this to false, control enter, it will now be there as a sneaky line. But in another instance, uh, the V show, no matter what, if it's visible or not, will always be in the DOM. Those are just two different ways to write different conditionals for if you want things to exist or not. So let's say lists. Get rid of this one. So if we have a list in our data, uh, the for loop can actually go right into the template. We can do a v4 person, persons, person.name. It is just that straightforward. 
I love this. This is so much better than all the times in React where you're just we're bashing our heads over. How do I do this? Where do I set this actual for loop? Is just this is just much easier. And we can add if we want, which I won't do now because it's not enough time. But you just add another line with a comma. Event values. So in case you want to update something in an attributes field for HTML, you can't do the double brackets. It just doesn't work. Doesn't like that at all. So you'd have to do something like the at, which is the same thing as uh, the v on. Or no, it's not the v on. Uh, it is the v bind. That is what this means. This is the same thing as v bind. It is just a shorter cut for it. Um, this means that it will take in the CSS class as its input and put it to the event target value. It just we don't have to do it in the React in a different function or setting the state and then updating it from there. This just does it for us. So let's say we want to update the class to red or blue. So we can just type red and we can just type blue. And it'll update the attribute accordingly as we set it to. And filtering is another cool little thing where uh, instead of like computed or other methods, there's something called filters, which are other kinds of methods where we can pipe other information through. So then this one, we have to lowercase, which takes a function value, returns it to lowercase. We have an uppercase, which turns it to uppercase. These are exactly the same. It determines how you want to put it in. You can do the view.filter up here, or you can do it as filters in below. You have many options for however you want to do this. I'll show you in a bit in the scaffold why you would want one or the other, but it's all really up to you. Just be consistent, as we've learned. Um, so it would take title. And put it to lower and put it to uppercase through here, and then put it to lowercase. So if we got rid of this, oh, I guess we could just do this uppercase. No, actually, it'll automatically do that. Do this Control Enter. It'll be uppercase because you didn't pipe it in. So you know it works. And I'm not lying to you. And the last basic thing I'm going to show you is a component. This is the pretty much when you get into the real nitty gritty stuff, which I like. Um, so you can do, like I said, the same way. Uh, you, can, uh, you can split up the different sections of a view object out here, or you can see in my commented section, I can just add it as a components field. Uh, for now, I'm just going to keep it separate. So we have the new view. It's pointing to the app. I have the data title. And I can put in a component called app user. And I can create it like here, where I call it app user, and it has its own data, but it is a function now that returns uh, the different data. And this is the actual template, which is the HTML uh, part of it. And as you can see here, it has the v4. It has the special view properties. And uh, you can pass it around to whoever you want. It, it, this is why I think Vue is much better for template designed applications, where you can just much easier pass this app user template around. And we are on to the final big thing, where uh, there's this very cool thing called CLI that I'd never heard of, where it pretty much gives you a scaffold of a regular view application. And so if you follow this fun step by step, you'll get something like, where are you? Like this guy. <laughs> but I dumbed it down because there's just a lot of stuff going on. So this is uh, what you get mainly. Uh, we're kind of used to a setup like this, but you might be like saying, what? what is that dot view? That is strange. I've never seen anything like that. Why would you have that? So I have to make this larger, which I don't know how to do in WebStorm because that's how it does. So I'm just going to zoom in. <laughs> there, that works. Uh, we have in our main application, which ties everything together, we can import view from view, import app from this app.view, which is our main application and another component called message. And we can tell it that here's a message which will give it to app with, uh, from the name app.message, but it's taking in message. And I've looked so, I looked all over the place for someone to explain this to me. And everyone has a very different explanation, which means that I don't think anyone really knows how it works. So uh, you just need this. It just overwrites itself with another function. It's strange. But that's how it works. So let's go into the first component app, the major one. So we can see it is split up by uh, a template, a style, and a script section. This is in every single dot view file. And we can see that our template has uh, the div app, and we're putting in the uh, module app message, which we passed in from the main. And we have different styles on it, which makes it pretty. In um, message, which is the second one down, 
we have a template which has this message is huge. Uh, and we're passing in another component which we can import. Uh, we don't have to do it in the main, uh, in the main section. We can just do it in each individual parts as low down as you want to go as we're used to. And we're just adding it, like I showed you before, in components as app input, even though it's called input. And then the final one, we have the input itself, where we're just printing out the message from itself. There's no interlinking around. I had that before, but it took too long to do it. And this is apparently still running. So logo is 8080. Show it to you. So it is up here. This message is huge. And I can type, and this part is the top message. This part is the, input, is the uh, import part. They are completely separate. Passing on components I just showed you is very easy. And that is basically it for view that I have time for today. And uh, Mindspace was very, very helpful in showing me the basics of view. I used a lot of their, uh, their kind of ideas for how to teach it in here. So that's uh, all I have to show you for view today. Thank you very much.